Peter, welcome to the Executive Talk. My pleasure. 2019 marks an important year for you. It's been 40 years at, at, at Nestle. Uh, when yes. you look back at, at your beginnings, and let's, let's even assume, can you remember the first day? How was that? First day was the 3rd of September, 79. And it was the start of a good experience, 40 years now. And uh, has been the start of many, many good experiences in many, many countries with, yeah, I would say one company, but one company uh, I've been proud to be part of. You had a job before, of course. It's not your first job, but as you say, I mean, the, the mainly you've been at Nestle. You've been working in different yes, countries yeah. at uh, different positions, of course. But being a one company man can have its its risks as well because we, we have that we have that word in German that betriebsblindheit that you you might not see uh, all that is happening or you might be a little bit too much in a bubble did you ever see that risk or did you ever experience it if, if you see all the travel the change of markets of countries of experiences of responsibilities there was no, no such thing of getting falling asleep somewhere or getting used to so much that you accommodate and so in, in that sense I would say no no risk at all and 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 then you see also not only your experience inside the company you see also the uh, many challenges the company as such has and you're part of that so the external world is part of your life too not only the internal Nestle world and so I would say no way uh, there was a possibility of uh, I would say falling asleep or getting complacent. Uh, but having said that, do you even recognize the Nestle that you 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 met seventy nine? I mean, has has the company changed uh, completely or dramatically? Or if you think about the values or the uh, you know the, the the business itself? Yes and no. Yes, because the world has changed, and uh, we're part of the world, and uh, the challenges, the way we go about things, the awareness about uh, local issues and global issues, and how we engage with them. Uh, this has all, uh, to a certain extent, evolved. Now, if you then think about the reason why we exist, the purpose of the company, if you think about the values, they didn't. And, and I can really confirm that because I started actually my career in, in, in Peru, the developing countries, or, and I've changed it, and always the same basics. Culture has changed, culture has to change. The values didn't. And the values, you know, are based upon very simple things. They're based upon respect and respect for uh, yourself first or the other and, and the people you work with. Respect for diversity in the world. And look, Nestle is a worldwide company. We know about diversity and, 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 and live that positively every day. And then respect for the future. And that is linked with this long-term thinking of a company like Nestle, mm. which is, if you would ask what characterizes us, is this capability of permanently l thinking in the long-term context, but with a short-term intensity. Uh, we've already touched a lot of things that I, I want to talk a little bit more about la later on. But when you, when you talk about respect, it's something that's very close to your heart because it, you, you, you often talk about that and you, you see it as the core value, not only for you or not only for, for Nestle here in Switzerland at the, at, the, at the headquarters, but for every Nestle employee in the world. We were talking about 335,000, I think, at the moment. Um, but it's very important to you that everybody gets these values and that everybody can live them on a on a day-to-day -day basis. How difficult is that to reach each and one of them? But look, you you, you mentioned it. Uh, Forty years, so many years. What has changed? So many things have changed. One, two things don't change: the purpose of a company. And our strategic direction is nutrition, health and wellness. Mm -hmm. The understanding through food and beverages, how you go about that, nutrition and health. Which is basically in, linked with our purpose as defined in enhancing quality of life and contributing to a healthier future. That is what motivates us every day. It doesn't change. That is actually what happened 153 years ago. The first product we had did exactly that. So mm -hmm. we stay close to that. But you have to formulate it so people can identify themselves. That's why what we did a few years ago, only three years ago, re-articulating re our purpose in a way that it talks to better to our people of today. Mm -hmm. But the values are the same thing. Responsibility, authenticity, all these things, long-term thinking, uh, feet on the ground, all these. Uh, how can you define in such a way that everybody, throughout the company, wherever it is, in, in whatever country, can, can first of all, 
memorize it, identify themselves with it. And that's why we, we formulated our values are based on respect. Respect for yourself, which, which results in uh, responsibility, authenticity. That's respect for yourself. Mm -hmm. Respect for the other, which is trust, living up to your promise and your word. That's respect for the other. Respect for diversity, hey, that is about multiculturalism, uh, gender balance. Um, uh, so we, and, and Nestle, we have more than 100 nationalities in this building alone. So it's natural to us, but respect for diversity. And the fourth one, a very important one, respect for the future and future generations. That's linked up with our long-term thinking. It is linked up with uh, uh, our, our uh, environmental engagement also, so that next generation can have the same opportunities we have. So respect is like an anchor that allows 300 plus peop a thousand people to, to formulate it. Mm -hmm. If I go now somewhere and say what are our values, they say, hey, based on respect and for myself, for the other, for diversity and for the future. So it helps to align and to make people feel part of one uh, company. I even read somewhere that I think you, you, you translate the mission statement deliberately in, in all these different languages as well, that you, you, you think it doesn't have to be just a, you know, the English version, but everybody has to f feel and, 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 and live it on a day-to-day on -day basis. In that regard, does it help that, that you are yourself a very international, uh, you, you spoke of yourself as, as a citizen of the world once, that, that you've traveled the world and as you, you spoke about it before, you, you started your career in Latin America, you, I think you spent 16 years there for Nestle, then you were uh, you went to the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Germany, uh, you name it, uh, Portugal. You've been everywhere. Um, does that help in, in in implementing your values and 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 the, the your way of thinking, your mindset? What well, well, it does. Uh, so I don't. We didn't only travel. We lived there mm -hmm. and we've been part of languages. What well, it does. Traveled through these countries with a Volkswagen Beetle, I heard as well. Yeah, that's what they. That's how we started. Uh, yeah. Uh, and 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 still a good experience um, and but what it does it gives you some context so that you, you you think in context i feel that's a very something that sometimes we're lacking in, uh, and that the basic values are valuable and 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 and, and are meaningful in, in different contexts that helps because mm -hmm. you live there you're seen uh, when I speak about diversity, I know what I'm talking about. I, 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 so uh, uh, it helps to give you some judgment. It gives you feeling. Uh, uh, it allows you to engage wherever you are. It allows you to see and simplify things because at the end of the day, you de make a distillation about what really matters, uh, I think. And, and, and if you, if you, if you want to be part of a company like this, uh, or actually lead a company like this, you should understand and feel not only here, but also mm -hmm. in the stomach, the reality of that company. And having lived in different cultures, different countries helps. I almost expected you would say uh, it gives you a different perspective because that's one thing as well that you keep keep talking about, and 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 you you kind of alluded to it as well with the, with the, the long term and short term thinking. That's something you always say that that it, one of the most difficult tasks of an executive is to keep things in perspective, meaning that not looking too much at the at the short term and not too much at what's happening at the moment, and and to keep your 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 shareholders happy, but to have a long-term vision. How difficult is that at the moment, where we know uh, everybody's looking at, at short-term gains and everybody's looking at the share price and at your next results. Can you even afford thinking too much into the future? Well, first of all, stay true to yourself. I mean, uh, uh, it's true that we live somewhere in a, in a society that is me today mm -hmm. rather than us tomorrow, mm -hmm. kind of. But you always had that, and, and, and it is for, for, for I would say a company for itself to stay true to itself in that sense. If we want to maintain our activities and our perspective on a longer time frame, well, uh, then uh, you have to be explicit. You have to pronounce it. You have to live up to it. You have to, uh, you have to have your own people believing in it, in, uh, in it. But you have to do something else too. It is to have short-term intensity. Long-term thinking should not be an alibi of not delivering short-term. Mm -hmm. And actually, it's the best way to get to the long term, is to be successful short term. But we would never do something short term that compromises our long term conviction. That is what long term thinking and contextual thinking means. Uh, can you go through with that 100%? Because if you have, if you have activist investors, for example, as, you, as Nestle has at the moment, uh, 
speaking about a hedge fund in, in, in the US, Third Point is probably the best example there. Um, when, when, when that um, uh, shareholder, uh, who's, who's the eighth biggest, I read, tells you, please think more about the short term and, and uh, we want to see this and we want to see that and we're not that much interested in what's happening 10 years from now. Uh, can you stay true to yourself? We we'll listen to all investors. And, 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 and each investor has his own personal view on things and all that. And we have, to, we have to combine, make an amalgamation of, but again, we have to stay true to ourselves. We shouldn't, you know what we want to be as a company too, uh, Nestle, we should be, we should be dependable. It means you can count on us. Mm -hmm. We are what you expect us to be, but because we are true to ourselves. You invested in Nestle because of what we are, what we have expressed, and, and, and staying true to that self-respect to a certain extent again, it's, it's just fair. And, but with an open eye to the investors in general, and, and that's quite a bit of my work too, to keep my ear on the ground of what's out there. Uh, and together with Mark, we do that. Uh, we have Mark many Schneider, contacts. The CEO, uh, yeah. yeah, the CEO. We have uh, many contacts with, with, uh, with investors because I feel in the days of today, yes, you have, to, you have to have the feel, you have to know. What is the expectation? Why? You have to argument, you have to, inter you have, to have an interchange and of ideas there. You have to give your arguments more explicit and make them known. And that is what we do with all investors. Do you feel as a chairman you could do that better than, than when you were CEO? Because you, you, you spoke about it once that you think that executives, CEOs of big companies have to be more outspoken as well. That even if, if, if you're criticized, you have to face the, uh, those critics and you have to be able to explain. Of course, if you're in a daily operational um, uh, business, as a CEO usually is, uh, that can be a bit harder. Do you think now being chairman, that gives you more freedom, more, more time also to to address all these all these critics as well? I think it complements each other. I mean, uh, uh, it's true that the CEO is more in the day to day and goes on roadshows about results and, and has some intensity there. And But always in the context of the long-term strategy of a company, mm -hmm. he has to communicate about the strategy, the execution, how the, he gets that really um, organized inside the company, etc., etc., etc. A chairman, I, I go on, on also speaking with, with investors on the global vision, strategy, values of the company, how we engage governance in general and, and things like that. If you see there's a certain gray area, but there is, a, there is quite a lot of complementarity mm -hmm. there. And I think that's a little bit what we do uh, together, uh, engaging with the investor world. And the investor world is one of them, uh, one of the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So we engage quite a bit me also as a, as, a, as a chairman, with other stakeholders and, and, and listen to them, uh, be it ONGs and, and you go on. So, yeah, it makes our job so, so much more interesting. Um, Having said that, do you ever miss being CEO? Or is that time, <laughs> a, a, a distant time, you say, I'm, 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 I'm good at the moment being chairman? Look, uh, in life, everything has a time. Mm -hmm. And I, I had my time, it, I did it quite for a few years. Yeah. and. And uh, at the beginning somewhere, if I, I, I consider myself somebody that likes action and going there and going to see our operations and going to our factories and, 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 and upstream farmers and, and you go on. And, and, and then you became of the same company uh, uh, chairman, which is a bit nose in and hands off. Mm -hmm. And I must say at the beginning, the, the hands were a little bit tingling, but, but at the end of the day, when they have a good CEO and, and it works well, and there's so much to be done as a chairman too. So, yeah, I'm I'm a happy man. Does your personal life uh, is maybe maybe it's more suitable being being a chairman? I read somewhere, and please correct me if it's if if it's not wrong. Also, as a CEO, uh, you arrived at the office at eight thirty a.m. because you didn't want to be here too early, but you 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 worked very long hours in the evening. I don't know, please, that's please correct me if it's <laughs> that's, <a style>. that's personal. <laughs> but maybe that's easier as a, as a chairman as well, no? To no, kind of look, adapt it more. The 8.30 came also because I was before responsible for the Americas. And, and, and so, so I had, had to come in late. No, right? it, it was later yeah, work. Yeah, and exactly. some way I keep it like that. Also, I have my uh, uh, routine in the morning as a uh, little bit of sports and all that too. Mm. want to keep that. And so, but I w would say uh, that's a routine. As a chairman, you're a little bit more freer in your agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, you travel less too, to be very honest. Uh, there's a little bit of more in, uh, less intensity in such a sense, which I feel is most enjoyable. 
Do you feel you can you can you can uh, promote things better as a chairman as well than than when you were a CEO? We, you talked about it, for example, uh, sustainability, diversity. Those are two things that that early on already and uh, already when you when you were appointed CEO, you were talking about these mm -hmm. uh, these these topics. And to be fair, back then, not many people talked about these topics as as much as they did now. Uh, do you feel that's a, that's something that that you can almost do better now? That you know you can you can you can promote these things. But the expectation of society, it's uh, environment is very high on the agenda now, and and, and rightly so at the end of the day. But but there was always challenges, and uh, and as a CEO and chairman, uh, we have to speak that language. How we engage in these issues and how we are. Uh, uh, wanting to be a positive part of society. We call it actually, we are convinced that a company to be successful as a company over time means shareholder value. Mm -hmm. It has to create value also for society and all stakeholders through whatever it does. Mm -hmm. That is called creating shared value. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that as a logical uh, uh, consequence of that is that we engage in discussing with all stakeholders, very, be it CEO as chairman. As a chairman, uh, uh, you can have a little bit more, I would say, uh, global framing, a little bit more distance than when you're in the trenches. Yet as a CEO, you have more authority on, hey, I'm doing it mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. So I would say, again, there we are complementing each other very well. But creating shared value, that, that is something that, that you, you're keen to, to, to underline and talk about. So you, you see Nestle as being also responsible of, of, of making this world a better place. But look, uh, our purpose is to enhance quality of life of people, individuals, their families, communities, the world in general, uh, and contributing to a healthier future. And that to do that through the understanding of nutrition, nutrients and health. And to do that through, through our pro products, reformulation, adapting, communication, transparency, etc., etc., and do it in the right way, creating shared value mm -hmm. with the farms we live with, through our f in, inside our own walls, factory, etc. And I've seen it. I started in Peru. I can tell you, Peru was not an easy place at the time. It was with Shining Pot, you may mm -hmm. remember, yeah, the beginning yeah. of the 80s and all that. Nestle stayed. We were there. We had mill districts. We worked with farmers. We still have five factories in Venezuela today, 3,000 people on the payroll. That is what's Nestle. So if you ask me, can you speak with authority that we engage with society? These are a few examples. And that is what one of my major motivations to be part of this company, you know. Creating a shared value is part of our DNA. It is what we do, our purpose, and how creating shared mm -hmm. value. And it's so natural, it's logical too. Economical activity, well inspired, and well done should be a positive force in society. And Nestle wants to be a force of, for good. Uh, but it's, it's interesting that you might say that also in, 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 the, in, in the respect of, of these countries, Venezuela, for example, where, where, where you're still active. Uh, and, and you talked about it as well in, when, you were, when you were in Peru, uh, things were messy back then. And, 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 and there were, there were uh, kidnappings and, and there were kind of uh, really turmoil. Uh, and, and you already back then said, no, no, we're, we're, not, we're not leaving. We're, we're part of this. Look, you can have it. You, look, also because of our uh, activity, we are linked with agriculture, raw mm -hmm. materials to a certain extent. Oh, no, you cannot shut down a cow for a few weeks. I mean, uh, so our engagements normally in the countries is forever. And, and then you have to have that mindset, you have to find the people to do that, you have to organize yourself. But that commitment to longer term engagement in the countries, I feel is, one, uh, is, is a good thing. Uh, at the end of the day, somewhere, there's even a benefit to it. We are seen as global, yes, but felt as local. Mm -hmm. Because we stay, we are part of the, the local communities, and which is linked also with our physical presence. We have 400 plus factories in the world. They are normally in, in rural areas. Uh, and, and rural areas are always a little bit longer term thinking and engagement. Uh, you don't start a factory in a mill district for a few years. You build a mill district, you have engagement with communities and farmers, you put for cooling sta stations, you have microcredits running, and you go on and go on. This whole fabric, and then you build brands with consumers. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a long-term thing. So you don't give that up so easily. 
we stay close to them. And Being uh, such, a, such a powerful player in, in yeah. a lot of these countries, does that make it more risky also being kind of a play ball for, for politics, for politicians? Well, no. <sighs> We, we, we have a certain size, and, 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 and in my language, I say high trees catch more wind. Mm -hmm. So are we... Meaning criticism as well. And we have that, you know yeah. that. And, 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 and fair, because nobody told me the world is fair, but, mm -hmm. uh, and we can feel it doesn't fair. Well, at the end of the day, that enables us to engage too, to explain. And the criticism you're always going to have when you do things, when you move things, when you have a size, uh, nobody has the same opinion and, and, and the diversity of opinions gives us an interchange of, an active interchange of, and oblige, obliges us to, 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 to think it through and, and, and to have our convictions based on arguments and to prove and, and sometimes criticism is giving us some insights. So we say, mm -hmm. oops, yes, we should work more on this or more on that and that's what we do. So sensitive, open to that is, is, is what is being part of society. And, and I think a company like ours should do that. And once again, the question, does, does it help uh, being, being as, as you are? Uh, whoever I talk to, they always say Paul Bilko, he's a, he's, a very, he's a very approachable man. He's, he's very um, easygoing. But he can be tough and he can be very kind of, kind of uh, clear in his message as well. And I was wondering, does that come from your upbringing as well? You were, you were born into a family of six children. Yeah. Uh, having, yeah. having three brothers and two sisters, that must, well have, formed. That must have taught you something for your, for your business. Well, I don't know. It was in the middle. Uh, maybe okay. <laughs> that, that may be. I don't know. I think also it's culture and, and, and uh, it's, uh, it's, if we, I try to be just myself and... and, and, and approachable well I, I want to be able to approach other people so be it yourself too and and why a complicated life I mean uh, I feel also uh, in in corporate life and all that egos are not good and and and, and just hey I've been uh, through all kinds of water and and I have gone through all kinds of countries and mm -hmm. known all kinds of people and I went through all kinds of levels and and so uh, I would say uh, staying simple and, and straightforward and is, is like a very efficient way of being yourself. So that's why maybe uh, that, 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 that's my style. Mm -hmm. Has your style developed or changed over the years? I mean, 40 years at, at Nestle, I, I assume you're not the same man as you were uh, 40 years ago. But, but have, you, have you become softer? Have you become harder? Have you become more you bossy? You should ask my wife. <laughs> I mean... Um, uh, no, sometimes I, I, I wouldn't say there's an underlying uh, thing. Sometimes I am intense. Sometimes I'm, I'm more relaxed. I think what what experience and and, and different uh, countries and different experience uh, what it gives to you is a certain uh, uh, higher level capacity of of re being relative to what's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. I call it detached involvement. I have used that a few times, which is be part of your life at the same time, be able to put uh, yourself in the public and observe which gives you a little bit of, uh, I would say, yeah, uh, in the good German, Gelassenheit, yeah. uh, which is this, this recul, en français, uh, 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 which allows you to, to, to maybe be calmer without losing intensity. What does that mean for the private man, Paul Bouquet? Are you, are you, are you, are you still driving uh, your motorcycle, BMW? Yeah. Are you still uh, flying your Piper? You're, you're still doing all these crazy things outside work. Oh, it's not crazy. I mean, I, uh, but yeah, I still do that, and uh, not enough maybe. But but but, you know, you have to have so many. You have to have interests outside, yeah. and these are uh, uh, things I like. And, and and it's a good moment that you can disconnect. And 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 I don't do these f week trips with motorbikes and all. But still having an hour, two hours of drive disconnects and and s charges battery. So it's a good thing. I mean. Uh, Interest outside the job is, is something that isn't useful. Speaking of which, that will be my final question. You once said uh, one of your dreams is buying a sailboat. <laughs> Have you bought it yet? You, uh, one of my dreams is a sailboat. I also know the day I buy it, my dream is gone. That's so exactly. I want to keep my dream. That's exactly what you said in an interview, and that, that's why I was wondering: uh, Have you bought it yet? And if you had, I would have asked you the question. So you still want to have a, a little dream, uh, which which you which you didn't follow through. So that look, you cannot have it all. I'm living in Switzerland. No, I have all these other things. Uh, uh, 
Uh, and, and I still have my doses of sailing. My brother had a, a sailboat in Ostend, where we're from, and so he allows me to go out with him and having that doses of sailing without having a sailboat. You know, uh, uh, the sailboat, you have two happy moments when you buy it, when you sell it. So <laughs> I don't want to go through that process. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm uh, in that sense pragmatic. Uh, but it's true, somewhere it's a dream. If you buy it, the dream is gone. I keep my dream. And on the other hand, you just said, uh, told me that you have seven grandchildren. So, uh, yeah. so I, I guess you're, you're pretty busy without the sailboat as well. Right? Well, yeah, but they're living all over the place. So uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we have seven grandchildren. We try to come together. And my wife is doing a marvelous job in organizing that uh, uh, to, to uh, once a year minimum, uh, Christmas normally. And uh, for the rest, they're yeah, in Chile and in Chicago and in Luxembourg. But uh, WhatsApp helps a lot there. Yeah. Paul Bulke.